Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the service tonight. If you will stand, please, and let's sing number 175 in our hymn book. 175. <clears throat> the purchase of blood to every believer the promise of God the vilest defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth praise the Lord praise the Lord taught us great things he hath done and great our rejoicing through Jesus but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder our transform when Jesus we see praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear his voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Well, welcome to our services tonight. And we just want to begin with a word of prayer. Brother Doug, we pray for us, please. Amen. You can be seated tonight. And again, we just want to welcome you uh, to the conclusion of our Vision Day. And we had just a great service this morning. Uh, we uh, appreciated the good Bible message we had and how it uh, shared with us uh, our theme this year. So we're looking forward now to uh, the rest of the evening and hearing uh, some more about uh, the vision, uh, the theme for the year and those kind of things. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, so we'll, uh, at this time, go ahead and ask our men to come. We'll take up our tithes offering and faith promise this evening. <clears throat> Amen. Well, let's pray together. Amen.
appreciate that. And uh, again, we're just looking forward to a pastor coming in just a moment to share with us about our vision day and those kind of things. But before that, uh, Lydia and Bailey are going to come and sing a special for us. Keep Bailey busy. Thank you, ladies. I tell you, that was good. That ought to, that ought to make a Presbyterian say, Amen. <laughs> it ought to make a Baptist say, Hallelujah. That was good, wasn't it? Good singing. And I appreciate it. It's been a great day today to be here on Vision Day. And I'm thankful that you've been here and chose to share this evening with us as well. And uh, uh, we had a great morning. I appreciated the, the Spirit of the Lord at work and how hearts responded to Him. And uh, it was a great, great morning. If you weren't here this morning, weren't able to be in the services or maybe working in one of our other ministries and didn't get a chance to hear the sermon, I hope you'll uh, either get a copy of that DVD or go on to our YouTube channel and, and watch that. That way you'll, you'll have had the whole day. Uh, and I know that tonight will mean more because of this morning, and this morning will mean more because of tonight. So don't... Don't leave out either one. I hope that you'll come and, and be sure to try to catch that. And uh, we are thankful for you who are here tonight in our services. Uh, we want to take some time tonight to look ahead uh, into 2014 in relationship with our theme of Love Works. And uh, you see that displayed for you there on our monitors tonight. And this morning we looked into 1 Corinthians chapter 13 
Uh, and there we found that God's love, the love of God, uh, never fails. God's love never fails. It's greater than all the gifts that we could ever have. It's greater than all the, uh, the, uh, the possessions or expressions that are humanly possible. And when all those things fail, there's one thing that never fails, and that's the love of God. And uh, God's love works. That's what that verse means. God's love, it gets the job done. When everything else fails, God's love works. And that's our theme for this year. And, uh, you know, we know that God's love worked in our heart and life. Yeah. The goodness of God led me to repentance because God loved me. He, I love Him because He first loved me. And He sent His only begotten Son. God's love did the work in our heart and life. And uh, it will work through our lives and impact the lives of others if we'll surrender our life to the Lord. He lives in us. He is love. He lives in us. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, all the rest. But love is at the top of the list. God's love will get the work done. When we look ahead here into 2014, we're looking now at how our theme will relate to our church and our church to this truth from Scripture as we move forward and get a clear vision for 2014. Uh, Drew's going to help me tonight by kind of putting some visual things up on the screen to look at. We've got some things to pass out for you. Uh, over here on the table after the service is over, we have your church calendar for this year. It looks just like this. Nice calendar that has, uh, of course, uh, so many different uh, activities, events, special dates, uh, all kinds of things in there. Not everything that we have planned is on the calendar. There'll be some things that we discuss and let you know ahead uh, a time as we move through the year. Uh, Ninety percent of the things are. Uh, there will be things on our calendar where they'll change. That just happens, doesn't it, uh, from circumstances and events. But, uh, but we'll try to give you as many things as we could. Uh, there are uh, specifically, if you're in a, if you're on a, uh, uh, in a group of, uh, of men, maybe deacons, trustees, finance committee, missions, these kind of things, we've set through the whole year the dates of those meetings. And I've tried every other way to try to do it. Uh, I've tried to work and try to get everybody to tell me I can be here this night. It's hard to do that. So we just set the dates. You got them a year in advance. Do what you can to try to get there. <laughs> And if you're not, if you can't make it, then you know we'll try to catch you up on that. But I don't know how other how other way to do that. But there's so many things in there that you can take a look at. And then as well, each day of the year, there's a portion of scripture you can read that'll get you all the way through the year. You'll find that on the table along with two or three other pieces of material that I hope you'll take all together. And what we ask you to do. Uh, is if you signed up and requested and reserved one of these calendars, that sheet is right beside it. If you don't care just to mark your name off on there, that way we'll know for sure everybody got theirs. People that aren't here tonight will keep it for them and get it to them, and that way nobody is left out and that kind of thing. So just find your name, scratch it off, and we'll know there uh, that that's been taken care of. But we'll talk more about the calendar in a little bit. But as we move forward now into the year with this theme, this truth on our heart, of how, uh, how love never fails, how love works and gets the work of God done. Uh, we we want to look ahead and, and uh, as we consider our church, uh, the, the best way to have a vision for the year is to define our purpose as a church very clearly. Uh, what are we? Who are we? What, what is it that uh, we are to be in the hand of the Lord in this world? And I believe our purpose here at our church is, is a very clearly definable thing. Uh, we, uh, we, who, uh, we know here that uh, all that we do as a church, uh, as we look ahead, uh, we, want it, we want it to prove and we want it to, uh, to, to have embodied within it this great truth of how God's love works in the world. Uh, we're going to sum up these purposes very simply for you uh, in three ways. The purposes that we have that we believe are the purposes of a local New Testament church are number one, to love the Lord and glorify God above everything. That ought to be our primary purpose. I think the second purpose that we have there is living in and growing in the Lord. As God's people, we're to live in the Lord and we're to grow in Him. 
And then thirdly, we're to lay down our lives in service. That was his example for us. I believe these are the three great purposes that we have uh, for our church as we move forward in 2014. I want to share with you, and we're going to go through each of those things a little more in depth, but I want to share with you right now just a short video testimony by one of our families here tonight. And, uh, and I, I wanted them to do this because from time to time, uh, people come to me and they share with me uh, things that, uh, that are a blessing to them, how God's been working in their heart and life. And there's times I just wish, you know, everybody could hear that and because it has such a relevance to, uh, to understanding that we are on point, that our purpose as a local church is being realized in hearts and lives. And that's what we need to know. And, uh, and I ask him just to share some of these things with us. And uh, I think it, it, when you listen to this, you're going to hear that some of the purposes of our local church have been effective, that, that they are uh, recognized, that they are working and being realized in the lives of families in our church. And we appreciate all of our families. We're going to let, uh, let them play this video right now, Brother Drew, and, and we'll just watch that and, uh, and then we'll continue on here. Brother Marcellus, we enjoy coming to the Tri-State Baptist Temple. We have been here for um, over a year. Um, Haley has been um, in the youth ministry for a couple of years, and she's been to church camp for the last six years. Um, my wife and I were um, at church camp last year. We um, enjoyed it and enjoyed the fellowship of the whole church, and, and we saw a couple people saved. We enjoy the youth and the ministry here. Um, God's word is uh, being preached Sunday and Wednesday, and uh, we feel like that we are growing as a family with uh, God's word at this church. And I believe the vision that our pastor has here is for um, God's honor and glory. So um, my hope is um, in Jesus Christ and. Uh, my family and I enjoy coming here. Amen. I appreciate Brother John and Missy and their family. And uh, I'm excited that, you know, some of the great purposes of our church, I think they touched on those things. That we're, uh, we're to, you know, we're here to, uh, we're trying to, 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 to love the Lord and glorify Him and lift Him up. And, and we want to live in the Lord. And we need a place where we can grow in the Lord as a family and where we can serve Him and have opportunities to do that. And uh, I'm appreciative of the Marcellos, what they mean to our church. But let's look at each of these purposes just a little more closely for a moment. When we think about uh, the purpose of loving the Lord and glorifying Him as a church and moving forward in this year, you know, we remember we're commanded to love the Lord, aren't we, in the Scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses beginning there in verse 5, God's Word said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, with all thy might. Uh, these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Uh, when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. They shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. When you come to the New Testament, the Lord reminded us in Mark chapter 12 and verse 30, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. When we think about defining that purpose and setting it forth, uh, what are the ways we can move forward in 2013 uh, in the work of the, the love of God uh, and, and see this purpose realized. Well, I think some of the ways that we can prove uh, the sincerity of our love for the Lord and love the Lord and love God is number one, love His word. Love His word. Uh, you know, uh, publicly, uh, it has been the heritage and the foundation of our church uh, that our services and ministry, are based on the preaching and teaching of the Word of God. Amen. It's always been that way. And it needs to always continue that way. 
And we said this morning, we're in the day and age where uh, people no longer have Sunday night preaching services, Wednesday night preaching service, don't have Sunday school anymore, uh, and the morning services aren't really Bible preaching anymore. Uh, they're pep rallies and uh, motivational speaking engagements for, uh, for people. But here in 2014, we don't need less preaching. We need more preaching than we ever had before. And we need to love His Word. Uh, Sunday morning and evening, we preach the Word of God. Uh, the, the, the pulpit ministry of our church is the central focus of every service. We have great singing. You just heard it. Not hear any better. Any more Christ-honoring singing than what you heard right there. People who can play the piano and all these instruments and groups who can stand and sing and a good choir that honors the Lord in all they do. And those are all wonderful things, but they're never to take precedent over the preaching of the Word of God. The Lord told His disciples, preach the Word. And the power of the Gospel is the power of God to save souls. And the preaching of God's Word must continue and will continue Sunday morning and Sunday night. And uh, that's why we focus on that in our services. On Wednesday evenings, uh, we study uh, certain series and topics of things. And right now we're in the book of Psalms. But every Wednesday night, you're going to hear Bible teaching and preaching. Uh, things that are geared to your family that can strengthen and help you. Uh, I'm excited. I, I've played around with this. I've dreamed about it, told you about it. But this summer, uh, June, July, and August, on Wednesday night, I'm going to, I'm going to teach or work our way through a legitimate Bible college class. And uh, if you were wanting to get a one-year Bible degree, this would be a class that you would have to take. And it may be done a little bit differently. It may give you some homework that you have to do and these kind of things. I'm not going to grade you, but if you'll follow through with me and stay with us, uh, that would legitimately be a qualifying credit in a college class. And I've always wanted to do that to help us just to further our growth in the Lord and His Word. Uh, we'll be doing that on Wednesday nights this summer. But uh, our, our preaching services are important. We need to love the Word of God. Uh, Dr. Lee Robertson said that it takes three to thrive. Three to thrive in your Christian life. And if he said that 50 years ago, think how much more important that is in 2014. And uh, another way that we can love the Word of God is through the special meetings that we have throughout the year at our church. I, I've been excited this past week as we finish up the calendar and we've nailed down dates and we've gotten things ready about the things that we'll have in our services as special meetings throughout the year. We'll start off the first full week of March with our annual Bible conference with Dr. Geiler, beginning on Sunday night, moving all the way through the week until Friday night when the choir comes to sing. It's one of the great meetings we have all year. You're hearing one of the greatest Bible preachers alive on planet Earth in Dr. Geiler, and we're thankful he's going to be able to come and be with us. A little bit later on in the summer, we're going to have Dr. Ed Carter back. He did such a great job for us last year, and we're going to do something similar again with a Saturday morning breakfast and fellowship and focus on visiting and soul winning, and then him coming in on Sunday and preaching for us. We're calling it a Vision for Souls weekend, and he'll do a tremendous job as he gets to come back in and share these things with us. Our mission conference this year, uh, the dates are in the, uh, in the calendar. It's going to be a little different than it has been before. Uh, Dr. Shumpert is not going to be with us. He, uh, he just isn't taking any meetings now uh, very far away from his home. He's gotten to that place with his health. He nearly went home last year and nobody would have known about it but me. He told that with me and shared it. And we prayed about it and the Lord was sustained him and he was able to stay. But uh, he's not going to be taking meetings outside of his, of his community now. Uh, and we're thankful for how God's used him for many years. But this year our whole conference is going to be a little different. And the schedule's different. And in fact, we're going to have one of our missionaries, Brother Greg Wagoner, who's been in Tanzania, Africa. He's going to come and be our key speaker. He does a tremendous job. He's one of the most vibrant, exciting preachers you'll ever hear. He's going to come and do the preaching for us. And it'll be a great Bible, our mission conference. Conference or, uh, and you'll enjoy that, and that's uh, 
uh, in our calendar. Homecoming Day is going to be special this year. We've uh, been talking to uh, uh, these men and uh, nailing down some dates, and, and we're still finalizing it, but we had talked to Pastor Sammons earlier uh, in the winter about coming and being a part of our homecoming, taking the, the morning hour and sharing with us a history of Tri-State Baptist Temple and I'd love to have that on a DVD, have that recorded uh, from the very beginning, the things he knew and, and uh, how the church began and how it uh, is moved forward to the day that it is today. And then uh, preaching for us, we're going to have Brother Chuck Harrell, who was on staff here before, and uh, he'll come and preach, and we'll have a great homecoming this year. So, so many special meetings and things throughout the year. We ought to love to come to hear God's Word by preached by some of the greatest preachers, and I say that relative to the fact that they're surrendered and being used of God uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, we love His Word through preaching, uh, through the services, through Sunday school. I can't encourage you enough this year uh, to be involved in Sunday school. When you go to pick up your calendar tonight, there'll be a booklet there uh, giving you 10 reasons why Sunday school ought to be a part of every family's life. Everybody. It doesn't matter how old we are, children, senior citizens, whatever. We ought to be in a Sunday school class. Sunday school is one of the most important tools in our, in our church ministry. It, it, it edifies the believers. It will build us up. It equips us by teaching us and training us how to know the Lord and serve God and, uh, and study His Word. It, it's, it's an evangelistic tool because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the Word of God and the Sunday school hour is focused on God's Word. So I hope in the year 2014 everybody will find a place in a Sunday school class and, uh, and love the Word of God and let God's Word have an impact in your heart and life. We love God's Word. We can love it through our preaching services and special meetings in Sunday school, but also don't forget that we do have uh, our services recorded in a DVD format so that it can be watched back on a TV, and uh, you can go and, and pick one of those up, just let Drew know you'd like to have it, what service you want, you can get it. Those DVDs are useful for witnessing to people, sharing God's Word, uh, also for personal study. Take a message, go back and listen to it again, and uh, it's a great way to love the Word of God in 2014. And then also, uh, we have uh, a YouTube channel, uh, Tri-State Baptist Media. If you go to YouTube, you can go in there and watch almost all of our services. Uh, and special music and programs and all these kind of things right there and uh, you can watch that. Now why I'm saying that and why I'm encouraging you to use that form of social media, I want to say this as well. I hope everybody will be responsible using any type of social media. There are so many ways that it can be effective and it can be used as a positive tool, but there's also a lot of ways it can be a very negative thing. And you have to let God have control of the buttons and your fingers when you use social media. I hope all the parents here will be responsible for your children this year if they're connected to the social worldwide web. I hope you'll monitor that. You need, as a parent and a child, to have an open air policy so that you can be on, involved, logged in, view and see every social media site that they're on so that you'll know exactly what's coming in and out of their heart and life. And if it's not that way, then they don't need it. If it can't be that way, it's not necessary in their life. And I want to encourage you that that be the way it is. Don't forget you adults also, hey, 1 Corinthians 10.31 says that whatsoever we do, whether we eat or drink, should be done for the glory of God. That means every picture on your social media ought to say, I'm a Christian, I love God, I want to live for the Lord, I want to serve Him. It should be there to magnify and glorify God. Every pen, every post, every picture, it ought to be for the mag magnification and glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ought, people ought not to click on that and have any other opinion of you at all other than that you're a separated Christian that loves God and wants to live for the Lord. And uh, if that can be reality in your life, these can be positive tools to use for the glory of God. But don't forget about that way of loving the Word of God by accessing and letting people know about that channel. We also have another way you can love God's Word this year, and that's through the literature that we have. And I don't say a lot about it. I, we have some out back here. Uh, over the course of our ministry, we've put together about 25 different booklets 
from a variety of different subjects. Uh, there's uh, personal salvation, how to lead a soul to Christ, how to know you're saved, what happens after you're saved, about baptism, uh, personal revival, how to have personal devotions. Uh, there's literature back there about prayer. Uh, there's literature about the polity and order of the church. There's literature about Bible prophecy, about what the proper Bible is that you ought to have. There's 25 different types of booklets. We're in the process of trying to get together some nice uh, upright stand literature racks that we can put all of that in, put them at our entrances, our main entrances, so you can have access to those things and utilize them uh, for your own study, your own use, to answer some questions, use them as witnessing or soul winning tools. And uh, we need to love the Word of God in 2014, not only in a public way like right here, but also privately and personally in our own heart, in our own life. Uh, in our hearts and homes, we ought to make God's Word the final authority for our life. God's Word is the final authority. It's where we go to for the, for the yes or no answers of life. It's where we get our guidance. It's what leads and guides us. Uh, it, we ought to obey it and apply it in our own homes and in our own lives. You know, if all of our families, I'm convinced, would love God's Word in 2014, both publicly by attending and being faithful, and personally and privately in your own homes, 2014 is going to be a powerful year of ministry and growth at our church if we'll love the Word of God the way that we should. Uh, in, uh, in, there are five things that God's Word teaches us we ought to do if we truly love the Lord. Number one, we ought to read His Word daily. It's got to be a part of our life. In fact, on the calendar, we said again, you can, you can go back up now and catch up from January 1st and read all the way through and read through the Word of God in a year through that schedule that we have in our church calendar. You ought to have personal devotional time with God every single day. And we have resources available to help you with that and to teach you how to study the Word of God. Uh, one of the other items of material, you've got that little booklet, 10 Reasons Why You Ought to Attend Sunday School with you that have a calendar. But also, there's a booklet called How to Have a Bible Study Notebook. We taught through this on Wednesday night uh, one year, and we gave you illustrations and examples. I actually have pictures of my own handwriting of my own Bible study notebook showing you how to do that. Uh, this is just one of several booklets. I have others that give you different Bible study methods and uh, everybody ought to be studying the Word of God personally and privately in their own home, reading it and making it a part of their life. Uh, you ought to have prayer daily and speak with God and let God speak to you every day. If we love His Word, we're going to love to hear from Him and He speaks through His Word and we're going to be able to speak to Him. Uh, thirdly, we ought to be faithful to attend the services because we do love God's Word and because of what God does through those services in the preaching and teaching of His Word. Fourthly, we ought to, we ought to let being a witness of the Lord uh, be a part of our life. He wants us to be a witness. Uh, it's His will. It's His command. And we love His Word. We're going to obey Him. And uh, we can prove the sincerity of our love through our obedience to His Word. Fifthly, we ought to give financially to support the Lord's work. He's taught us this in His Word. It's a commandment of God. God says uh, we're to love the Lord with giving. Prove the sincerity of your love, He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And, uh, and give for the work of God. God teaches three ways to give in the local church. He teaches tithing. It's a commandment, by the way, isn't it? It's not a suggestion. He commands uh, uh, in Malachi 3 that we tithe. Not to tithe is to sin and rob God. Right. I didn't say it. God said it. Right. He says if you don't tithe, you're sinning. You're robbing God. And uh, it's hard to love God and not tithe. It's hard to love God and rob from Him and and sin against Him like we should. He, he gives us throughout the Word commandments and, and He gives us uh, information about tithing. It's to be the 10% or the 10th of our gross income. 
We're to give that uh, as we receive it uh, to further the Lord's work. It's to be brought into the storehouse in the local church. You don't give your tithe to the TV preacher. You don't give your tithe to some special benevolent group or some special project or fund. You don't tithe and earmark your money that it goes for a certain project at church. Your tithe goes into the general fund, 10% off the top of the gross. God said, this is the way it needs to be. I've commanded it. If we really love the Lord, we're going to be tithers. We're going to prove our love by giving. But there's a second way we give in the scripture. It's our faith promise missions offerings. And uh, we say a lot about that during mission conference time. Uh, But it's a covenant between you as an individual or your family and the Lord. Uh, It's to be given above your tithe and special offering. Uh, It's to support world evangelism. Uh, It's important church business, our faith promise offering, because it's the Lord's business of supporting world evangelism. Uh, It's taught in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. Your faith promise offering is a solemn agreement between you and the Lord. God said, I want you to give this. You say, yes, Lord, I'll be a vessel, a channel through which you give it. And then you covenant with your church in a way to give it because you're saying that this is what, this is what the Lord's laid on my heart to give. And then we build our budget and plans for the year based on what you tell us. Now, we never ask for your name individually. We don't want to know that because it is a private thing with you and God. But, uh, but it's an important thing. And uh, at our mission conference, uh, we reevaluate those things each September and, uh, and try to grow in our faith and in our giving. And then the third way is love offerings. Now, these, uh, these are also above our tithe. They're, they're not our faith promise. They would be in addition to our faith promise. Uh, They're never instead of your tithe or faith promise. They're in addition to special offerings. Sometimes throughout the year we'll have them. Uh, Special offerings uh, periodically based upon maybe a need uh, or the Lord's direct leadership. This time of the year we have extra uh, extra expenses. Uh, first of the year, semi-annual fees due. Uh, we've got escalated utility bills this time of the year. Uh, we can do something special in the form of an offering above beyond our tithe and faith promise. Uh, this year we have two planned offerings that we want to pray for and allow the Lord to do something extra through our lives for the Lord's work in the local church. Uh, One of them is going to be in May. The other one will be in October. They're on our calendar. We're calling them Magnify and Elevate Offerings. And uh, we're going to take these for a variety of special needs as the Lord leads us uh, to determine that uh, here on our church campus and properties. Uh, There's a, a... hundred different things that we need to do to magnify the Lord here on our properties and to elevate our capacity to minister to people. All kinds of different things that we could do. We need some windows in this building. You don't think so? Go stand one of these aluminum windows and uh, the cold air will, uh, will freeze you if you stay there very long. Just think of how more efficient our heating system would be with some better windows in our building. Uh, We could uh, use it for carpeting in our auditorium. This is amazing carpet, isn't it? I think this was uh, come out of uh, uh, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. It hardly ever seems like it's going to go completely threadbare, but when you look at it, it definitely could stand to be replaced. Uh, We know that we could use it to to seal and fill our parking lot. It's in desperate need of that. Just walk outside. There's gaps and cracks that big running all the way across our property. If we don't get that field fixed and sealed soon, we're going to be looking at a repaving job instead of just a filling and a sealing job. These are things that we need done. Uh, Our ministry center, we need to pay that thing off and get rid of that monthly payment that we're paying on that building. Uh, We need to uh, someday pray about transitioning from this expensive electric heating to a more efficient gas type of heating that's now available in our part of the country or where it wasn't available when the church was put on this piece of property. There's so many things we could do as God's people if we just had a vision to magnify and elevate the Lord through our properties and campus here on our properties and church. So I hope you'll pray about that. God said uh, in His Word that we ought to love Him through giving. He said in Matthew 6.20, But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Luke 6.38, He said, Give, and it shall be given to you. 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. He said, God loveth a cheerful giver. If we love God, we're going to give, and we're going to love the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As we look into the year 2014, uh, our primary uh, purpose uh, one of those in, in glorifying the Lord and loving Him is loving His Word, loving the Word of God. Uh, I want you to think about uh, the second uh, purpose of our church, the second purpose, living in and growing in the Lord. Every, every believer living in the Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord living through us, growing more like the Lord in this year. It's a purpose that our church is here for. In 2014, uh, we want everyone here to live within the powerful resource that lives in you. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> he lives in you. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. In uh, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, it says that as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him, uh, rooted, built up in Him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Living in the Lord, growing in the Lord in 2014. This is a purpose that we have here at our church for the heart and life of every believer. And I think there are two important areas uh, that we can uh, that can help us to live in the Lord and grow in the Lord. And those two areas are through fellowship with God's people and faithfulness to participate in and be involved in the special ministries and activities of our local church. Helping us to live in the Lord and grow in the Lord. When we think about fellowshipping with God's people and uh, being encouraged and edifying one another, there's really no substitute for that anywhere outside of the house of God. You think about it, you can't find it anywhere in the world. You go to your, the place you work and there may be a few people there that have a Christian testimony and know the Lord as their Savior, or there may be not. But it's a great thing to come in on a Wednesday night and know people there of like mind and faith that can encourage you and can strengthen and help you and that you can share uh, what it's like to try to live for the Lord in this world. There's no substitute for fellowship. It'll grow us and strengthen us and help us. Uh, Sunday school is a great way to have fellowship with God's people. It's more informal. Uh, it's not this service structure that we have. Uh, we, you, know, you can sit down with a cup of coffee and sit down to someone next to that you maybe haven't uh, got to speak to for a while. My Sunday school class, uh, there's so much fellowshipping goes on before our class begins. It's just encouragement to see people talk about things and share things going on in their life and, and, and just build those relationships in their class. Uh, it's normally smaller. Uh, there may be people there that in this service sit on the other side of the church. They don't sit near your seat, you know, so you don't get to sit around them or talk to them before the services and things. Sunday school is a great way to build relationships with other people in the church, especially new families and folks that you don't know. Another way, especially uh, for ladies, is our ladies fellowship. Uh, they meet a few times a year. They have an annual ladies tea in the, in, the, in the spring. They have something around Christmas. In the fall, we have our ladies retreat. Uh, this year, I know they had a tremendous ladies meeting at Christmas. Uh, it encouraged our women. Uh, they decided throughout this year of 2014 to just do some random acts of love for people that, that God lays on their heart. 
And what a great thought that was because uh, my wife didn't know about the theme for our church, and, but God knew, didn't he, about loving people and doing things for them out of the love of God for other hearts and lives. And so that's a great way for all of our ladies, regardless of your age, uh, to be encouraged and to grow in the fellowship with other people. For our men, we have our faithful men's fellowship meetings. Uh, they'll begin this year monthly in April and go all the way through the month of November. Uh, we had a great year this year. We had our highest annual uh, attendance. Uh, our monthly attendances were better than they had been before. We had a lot of new fan people, guys come through, our people, inviting other people there who maybe were unsaved or unchurched who got to hear God's word and to get introduced to our church and ministry. Uh, we need to build faithful men. We need faith-filled men who will be there for the generation to come behind them. And uh, this is an important ministry and fellowship and opportunity to grow in the Lord and His Word. Last year, uh, we studied the steps of a good man. We put together eight booklets in that series of studies. Uh, we have those. We'll have those available. If you weren't a part of it last year and you want to go back and get a copy of all eight of those booklets, it'd be great devotion for you to work your way through. Uh, maybe you who were in it missed a, a, a day here or there and you want to get a copy of the one you missed, you can do that. We'll have them. But those those men's fellowships are important. We have our teen ministry for all the teenagers in our church. Can't encourage parents enough to utilize this ministry in the life of your teenager. Uh, we have our teen group. And this year, they have an exciting, uh, well-balanced calendar of events and activities. Uh, not just there uh, entertaining young people, but, uh, but edifying them, encouraging, building them up, and teaching them to live for the Lord, love the Lord, and grow in their heart and in their life. Uh, looking through the calendar, of course, they have a weekly meeting on Wednesday nights. They've got a lock-in uh, coming up very soon. I'm thankful that I'm so old now, I don't have to spend the whole night anymore. I can come and go home and go to bed. Uh, we agreed always to come in early and fix breakfast for the teenagers. My wife and I come and do that at uh, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning and we fix some breakfast. But, but man, I've been in my bed all night long, so that worked out good. Uh, but uh, we appreciate uh, the lock-ins and what they do and mean. Uh, they've got a lot of outreach ministries the teenagers have scheduled this year. Uh, they have a certain dates set aside where they're going to go soul winning to win their peers, other classmates and teenagers, their own age group. Uh, they've got uh, nursing home visits planned where they're going to go and just try to share the love of God at some of our local nursing homes. They've got shut-in visits scheduled where they're going to go by and drop in on the shut-ins of our church and just share uh, the love of the Lord with them and let those folks know that they're not forgotten about. And uh, I'm thankful for the other unique special activities they have planned. We have a teen choir that's going to be rehearsing once a month and we're encouraging our teenagers to be involved in that. And our teen group is a great way for your young people to fellowship, to fit in, uh, to be involved in something that's going to be the right influence for their life. Our joy group is for our, uh, our just over youth. And uh, always uh, has been that you have to get a discount on your coffee at McDonald's to be a part of that. And it gives you something to look forward to when you grow up. You can be involved in the joy group. And this year I'm going to try to figure out how I can get more of you involved. There's some of you here, you just got to grasp the reality. You're old enough to be a part of that. You just got to give in. <laughs> Uh, don't fight it. Just let go and you'll have a good time. And I've got to find out a way to get more of you involved. But those that do know we have special moments and times together. We enjoy the fellowship and the love and the shared experiences. We have a diverse and enjoyable schedule of events. We have breakfasts and lunch and go shopping and do all kind of things. And we just have a great time together. And I hope you'll be a part of our joy group. The calendar has the scheduled events all through the year in there beginning next month all the way through November. It'll show you what you can look forward to. And uh, we're excited about a diverse and new uh, schedule that we have for our joy ministry. Uh, this year, to increase our ability uh, to better serve our families and to encourage fellowship, uh, encourage folks joining together and sharing uh, what's going on in our church. Uh, we have uh, a couple things that we want to implement that are brand new for us this year. And I want to try to just take a moment to share a couple of those things with you. Uh, one of those things is a church internet drop box. And some of you may be familiar with drop box. It's just a little thing you can go to on the internet and, and load it onto your computer. What it is, is it's a virtual 
file cabinet. And uh, if you clicked on the little Dropbox thing, once you load it on your computer, we're going to give you a church uh, username and password. This is going to be the church's Dropbox. So if you have a computer at home and you log in using the church's username and password, you're going to be sharing it with everybody else in our church family that has it. And one of the many things we want to do with this uh, is, is we're, going to, uh, we're going to allow you to access labeled folders. When you open it up, it's going to look like your desk with little fold, file folders all, all, all over it. They're going to be labeled with different things. If you went on it right now, you would find that there's a folder that's marked Welcome to TSBT Dropbox. If you open the folder, there's a PDF document there. If you click on that, almost every mobile and computer device can communicate with PDFs. It'll open it right up on your computer. There's a letter that I've written introducing this to you and explaining to you how to use it and what we want to do with it. And so it's there. But these are the, some of the things that we'd like to do with this Dropbox. Uh, we can place in there uh, postcards or flyers about events and activities at our church in, uh, in a format to where you could click on that and through your own home computer print those off and take them with you. If you, if you thought at home, boy, I wish I'd have grabbed some of those from church the other night. I'd like to give them to so-and-so today, but I didn't. You can access them right through that. Print them off on your home computer or the office and take it right with you, and they'd be just like the ones that you had here at church. Uh, some of the other things that we want to do with it, uh, you, could, you can use it to access our nursery schedule. We're going to have those folks who are doing our nursery schedule have it in there every month. And so it'll be marked in your home. You don't have a list. You forgot to get one. Am I supposed to have the nursery today? You can go to Dropbox, click on the nursery schedule, open it up. There will be the schedule. You can see whether or not you're supposed to be there. Uh, same thing for the offertory. The same thing for uh, uh, the uh, special music. Those schedules will be there for you to access. One of the things I really want to do with this is make folders where we can share pictures of events. Because, you know, you go with the Joy Group and they take a few, uh, but you all never get to see those. And maybe people take them at uh, the uh, Thanksgiving dinner for the children out in the Bible Club, but most of those, our church never gets to see those. They're on your phone or your device and if you, if you have this Dropbox and you utilize it, you'll be able to go on there and put your pictures right in that church folder. And then so somebody else can get on there, open it up, and see all of the pictures you placed on there. And they can put their own on there as well. And before long, we're going to have a great album of pictures for the whole year built up there. And you can take those and use them and print them or whatever you'd like to do. It's just a great way to share those kind of things uh, with one another. Another thing we're going to use it for is registration forms will be placed there. For instance, right now we have King's Court season. Uh, we'll have a folder for that. Uh, maybe you're talking to somebody at school. You're telling them about the program. They're wondering about how they can get involved or sign up or register. Uh, you could print one of those off right from home and give it to them the next day when you see them and you pick your kids up from school. They can fill it out, sign it up, and put it right in uh, to church, and they'll have that. So, uh, so this is something that uh, I think will be very useful to all of us. Uh, we're going to give you this little card in a moment. It has on there the church's username and password, and I hope that you'll keep Keep this within our church family, and uh, it'll be utilized for us. And uh, it can't harm you in any way. It works through our church, but you'll have access to it to share those kinds of informations and those different kinds of things. Uh, so, uh, so the Dropbox program is something we're going to be utilizing. In fact, it's already operable. You can log on there anytime you'd like to, and it'll be growing as we move forward. Uh, the second thing that we want to tell people about tonight, in fact, uh, by the way, guys, why don't you just go ahead and give one of these to everybody, and that has that information on there. The second thing I'm going to talk about right now is a new program we would like to implement at our church that we have had uh, experience with at other places. It's called ChurchCast. ChurchCast. And this is a tool we'd like to use uh, to stay connected and to share important information uh, through our church. Uh, the ChurchCast program is a company that, uh, that hosts this uh, service for churches like our church, Christian schools, other organizations. Uh, our daughter was at Grace Christian School, and uh, they had a school cast system like this. 
And uh, for instance, uh, if you woke up Sunday, uh, Tuesday morning and it was snowing, they could make one call and it would contact every student's family in the school and tell them school is canceled, no school today. Great way to communicate that with a large number of people. We want to do something similar to that here at our church, and uh, it's called ChurchCast. It's a rapid alert and communication system, and uh, they custom build them for your church. Through the ChurchCast system, we can send messages about uh, you know, certain uh, important information. We can give alerts about things. Uh, information can be sent out very quickly to reach everyone within your body. Uh, church cast can be used by both our church and we're hoping eventually uh, to utilize this in our daycare, among our daycare families. We've had a recent uh, incident where we needed to cancel our daycare and close it because of the weather. Our heat pump couldn't get the heat above 50 degrees in there, and the kids, you know, they'd have been popsicles walking around in there that day. And so we needed to cancel. We tried to get it on all the local news channels and the websites, uh, WSAZ, WWK, uh, whatever the Fox channel is, 11, whatever that is, and WSAZ. I was able, after I talked with Barbara and we decided to close, to contact WSA or WOWK, WCHS, and whatever the Fox affiliate is, and right over the phone they took my information and they were willing to put that on their TV broadcast, closed, Tri-State Baptist Daycare. That helps us. But if you're honest, most people watch WSAZ. A lot of people do that. They would not cooperate with us and take that information over the phone without a lot of rigmarole of us emailing them a letter, them sending us back a password, all this kind of stuff. They, they just wouldn't help us out. I mean, this was an emergency situation. You know, if we had church cast, we could have made one phone call that would have went directly to every daycare family and notified them, we're closed tomorrow. We did all we could, but we still had parents show up the next morning only to find daycare was closed. That makes me feel bad that that happens. And we tried to do the right thing and do the best we could with what we had. But this kind of system would really help us. You know, last night we thought we were going to have a major weather front moving through here today, two or three inches of snow. We could give one phone call on a Sunday morning and say, due to the inclement weather, we're going to have one combined service at 11 a.m., no Sunday school, no buses running, but we'll have church at 11. See you then. One phone call could take care of all of that with this system. Uh, the church cast system uh, can notify members of canceled services. Uh, it can help daycare families know of closings or delays. It can remind specific groups of people, such as people having choir practice. Don't forget, next week we have choir practice at 5 o'clock. One call to just that group of people in the choir. It can notify people of special meetings and, and activity reminders. One of the things that, that, that I think it would be good for is if we had an urgent request for prayer, one phone call could send that to every family in our church with church cast. And it uh, sounds like a great thing, didn't it? It is a great thing. Uh, as a church, we don't have to buy any equipment for this. Uh, there's no... Uh, there's no uh, initial uh, contractual obligations. Uh, the way it works is, is you could receive the information from the church by a landline phone. It can ring your house phone. It could ring a mobile phone. Uh, it can even send text messages or uh, emails to a computer or to a mobile phone. It can, it can be done in any variety of those ways. And uh, there's no setup fee for our church. Here's the way it operates. There is a $5 fee for the entire year per family in our church. That means our families, each of our families would only need to pay $5 and we have access to this for the entire year. I think it's very worthwhile $5 to have the opportunity to have that type of, 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 of com communication and to be able to, to do that. So we're going, to, we're going to give these young men, if they will, to go ahead and pass out this card. I want everybody to have one. 
uh, church cast, really only one member of each family need to fill this out. If you, if you were, would be willing to participate and you want to participate, uh, we, can, uh, we can just let you fill out this one card. The information necessary is on there. Uh, we'll set a date when we're, when we're going to close out the registration here at our church. And what we'll have needed on that date will have been your card and your $5. And then we'll take care of the rest of it, get it set up, get you in the system. And all those things uh, will follow suit. So uh, we'll set that type of date when, uh, we'll, when we're going to close this registration. Uh, but we're encouraging all of our families to invest in that as a way of joining together and communicating and sharing information here at our church. Uh, so these are two tools that we hope our families uh, will, uh, will be a part of. They'll, uh, that'll encourage their fellowship and, and growing together in like-mindedness and communication, knowing what's happening here at our church in 2014. Uh, the, not, only, not only in living and growing in the Lord uh, do, we, do we need this fellowship uh, with God's people, but we also need to be faithful to be involved in the meetings and activities uh, of our church. Uh, we were talking this right before the service tonight that so many people that when they can't be here, they feel like they're out of the loop. They feel like they're a stranger. They feel like they don't know what's going on. If you're not careful, you'll develop a I haven't been there in a long time complex which will lead you out the door because you feel like you're no longer a part. You know, the cure to that is just be a part. Be involved. Be faithful uh, to what's going on at your local church. That'll help you out. And uh, be faithful to the meetings and activities. God works in hearts and lives. And He works in hearts and lives to build and strengthen individuals and families. But do you know how He builds and strengthens churches? Through your life and your family's life. Our church is only going to be as strong this year as the summation of your family and your heart and life. And, uh, you know, God speaks to people's lives through special meetings and special speakers and ministers and pastors and missionaries and evangelists and events and things we have going on at our church. Now, it's why, as a pastor, I stress all the time, be there, be there, be there, be faithful. Because if you remove yourself out of the influence of the Word of God and the work that God wants to do, then you have effectively weakened our church by not allowing the Lord to do what He wanted to do in your life in that meeting. And so it's so important to be faithful. Psalm 34, 3 says, Magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together as a local church. Psalm 122, 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of God. And uh, we want a fellowship, and we want to be faithful to be involved in the meetings of our church because it will help us to grow and live in the Lord. Each special meeting and ministry uh, is there, uh, has been placed and put together to help us grow in our love for the Lord and in glorifying Him to edify us and equip us to live for Him and to grow to be like Him and to lay down our lives to serve Him. And as each of you and your families faithfully participate and God works in our lives, our church will be strengthened to prove that God's love really works because it's working in our heart and it will work through our heart into the hearts and lives of other people. Uh, love God and glorify Him. That's a defining purpose of our church. Uh, live in the Lord and grow in the Lord. It's a defining purpose for our church. And the third one is laying down our lives in service for the Lord Jesus. This is a great, great uh, challenge for us. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered to, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. That's our Lord's example. John 13, 5 says, After that He poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. What a picture, isn't it, of our Lord kneeling, taking the place of a servant. Philippians 2, verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Bible says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. We're all working and building, but the important thing is how are we working, who are we working for, and what are we building. We want to be laborers with the Lord Jesus Christ. His example is that He laid down His life and became a servant. And this year, that's a defining purpose for our church as we think about love working, never failing. God's love always gets the job done. Uh, But we realize that we must lay down our lives to serve Him, to show a lost and a dying world the love of God for them. We think about some ways this year that we can lay down our lives and serve the Lord and let the love of God be seen through our lives. One of those ways is in soul winning. Winning souls to Jesus Christ publicly, personally. You know, the greatest way of laying down our lives in service for the Lord is in sharing the love of God and the gospel of Christ with the lost. You can't do anything greater than that with people. You can't give them anything greater than that. And uh, here at our church, all we are and do ultimately has the goal of winning a soul to Christ. Whatever it might be, ultimately it has that purpose to share the gospel, to see souls come to Christ. In our personal lives, we ought to live in the Lord and allow Him to love through our lives. And everywhere we are, we ought to be looking for opportunities all around us to reach out to other people. You don't know in what place, in what circumstance and situation God can use you to influence a life for Christ. Point them to Christ or into a local church when they're looking for one. I want you to watch this other video and uh, I think it helps us to understand a little bit one of our families that are such a blessing uh, about uh, how God can put you at the right place at the right time if we'll just take the time to get involved in people's lives. Ask a question about the Lord, about uh, where they're from, about uh, open up a conversation and turn it to the things of God, what God will do and how people are looking for that. Just funny. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to take this time to praise the Lord and to let you know how the Lord has blessed us. We've been so glad to come to this place. Um, We wanted to share a little bit about how we got to meet the pastor and Angie. Um, We've been grateful with the Lord for the way he works. Uh, It was one day when we were still looking for a church, a home church, and we were eating at McDonald's with this friend. We had just gone to her church and we were still considering about joining her church. Not actually joining, it was our first time. And then uh, Angie approached us and asked us if we were from Peru. And I said, no, I'm from Honduras. And she said, oh, I have a brother who is a missionary in Peru. And then Pastor Tim started telling us that the next day you guys were going to have a BBS. And he started giving me directions about how to get here. And he said, well, you'll never get lost. There is a a cross always lit up there in a cemetery. And then the next day he came to me and apologized. And he said, I'm sorry that cross is always lit up all the time. I don't know what happened last night. But anyways, that wouldn't have helped me. I always get lost. (laughs) So I'm glad I got to come to BBS. I really loved it. I was impressed at the minister that I mean that they have with the kids. I just love the way they treat kids and the way uh, I mean the efforts that they make to uh, teach him about God's word and it's I was just so amazed and then I decided to continue coming and in my life I have faced a lot of um, 
difficult times and the church has been just amazed and I won't say names because I'm afraid I'm gonna leave a lot of people out and it won't be fair because just about everybody has been a big big blessing to me and I praise the Lord for that and I have never taken the time to say thank you and I just wanted to take this opportunity and on behalf of my family thank you so much for being there for us and wow the Lord has shown me how much He loved me by bringing me to this church. I, I am truly blessed. Thank you, everybody. Amen. 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 And we, we are thankful that she feels that way, but we feel like it was of the Lord to bring her here. And we're thankful and how God works. But, you know, there are people all around us, everywhere we are, that are looking for the right place, looking for God to lead them, looking for God to guide them. And we've just got to be willing to see those opportunities and make the most out of them wherever we are. And soul winning is in an area where we desperately need uh, to love the Lord and let God's love work through our lives for lost souls. There are six things that ought to be uh, in our heart and mind when we think about being a soul winner. One of those things is memorizing scripture. You know, 1 Peter 3.15 says we ought to be ready always to give an account for the hope that lies within us. We ought to memorize portions of God's Word that tell people about the love of God. Uh, one of the things on the material where your calendars are today is a little card presenting the gospel and pointing people to Christ. It has on there uh, those, uh, several verses of Scripture and questions and things on there, key points that you could put this in your Bible, uh, wherever you are, and if you have an opportunity to speak to someone about Christ through these Scriptures, you can lead them to know Him as their personal Savior. You ought to memorize these verses of scripture so that someday you don't even need the card God gives you the opportunity to look uh, to lead someone to Christ uh, not only do we have that should we memorize scripture but we ought to utilize tracks utilize tracks distribute gospel tracks and booklets keep them with you all the time it's something you got to discipline yourself to do it's got to be a learned habit to do that and, uh, and it's something that we need to, to work on in our own life because uh, there's so many powerful testimonies of how a track led someone to Christ and saved their life and soul. Uh, we ought to, uh, throughout the year, we're going to be visiting house to house in our neighborhoods, your street, uh, uh, your block, your road taking material that we provide and just going door to door and just inviting people to church or sharing a gospel track with them uh, in your own community, your own family, doing that together. There'll be times when we meet together as a church and canvas areas. God's Word says we need to go out into the highways and hedges. And there'll be times we set aside uh, throughout the year to come together here at church and reach out into our Jerusalem two by two just as the Scripture gives us that uh, illustration. There's going to be times... Uh, when we do that. Then we need to be praying continually for those that are in spiritual darkness. The Bible said if our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost, in which the prince of this world has darkened their minds. He's hidden to them the gospel. They're in darkness and they need the light and we need to pray that God will help them to see the light. Then we need to intercede for every service, every sermon that's, that takes place at our church yeah. this year. What would happen if you'd pray for tomorrow Wednesday service beginning tomorrow night and Sunday service beginning tomorrow praying all through the week for God to do His work in that service. I think we would see God's work done and people come to know the love that God has. But soul winning needs to be a part of, uh, of our laying down our lives in service for the Lord. But a part of soul winning is also utilizing special days and outreaches. We have so many things on our calendar you can use. People are more tender and open at Easter. Uh, Memorial Day is a special time of the year. Uh, homecoming, Christmas time. These are all special events and times of the year when people's hearts are more open. The doors open a little bit. There are special things they may come to and visit that they wouldn't any other time of the year. You've got to look at these opportunities and, uh, and utilize them in winning souls for Christ. We'll have, again, organized visitations throughout the year. We've got Bible camp, 
Bible schools, our King's Court program, our teens have outreaches planned to reach others. We have our OU campus outreach uh, down in Ironton. We're feeding the football team and, and we have our bus ministry. Uh, Brother Bill goes to the nursing home uh, every week or every other week and he goes down to Star every, every other week or so. And, and through him, our church is reaching out into these places and uh, God is reaching souls. Uh, Jesus told his disciples, lift up your eyes, look on the fields. Uh, the angels told those disciples when the Lord ascended, what are you doing still standing here? Go and get busy. Reach souls for Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 5 and verse 4, he says, Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. He said in Matthew 4, 19, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. Two things in those verses. The word net is plural, it's nets. And the men, the fishers, is plural, not just a fisherman. He doesn't want just your pastor, preacher, missionary, evangelist to be the fisher man. He wants to make you fishers of men. And we've got to let down more than one net if we want to catch some fish. And that's why we've talked about all these things that we have are opportunities to reach souls for Jesus Christ. We need to follow the Lord in this year, be involved in fishing for the souls of men. We've got to get some nets in the water, use the special meetings and outreaches to catch souls for Christ. Another way that uh, it's important for us to lay down our lives in serving the Lord is in supporting missions and missionaries. You know, the vision for a local church is to be a worldwide vision. We're to have a scriptural vision. That means it's a balanced vision. That means that we don't focus more on home or foreign missions. We try to be involved in both. And uh, neither is more important than the other. It bothers me sometimes when people uh, say, you know what, preacher, we could really uh, have a lot more uh, maybe money if we didn't spend it on all those foreign missionaries. We could use it right here for people who need it at home. Well, brother, how many doors have you been out knocking on in your neighborhood trying to win people to Jesus? It's both important. He said, go into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. It's all together at the same time with an equal focus of importance. And we have a good scriptural balance of home and foreign missions. Uh, it's also a vision that we have defined with a purpose and plan, our missions and missionary uh, ministry. The mission ministry here has a threefold plan to maximize our potential to reach souls at home and around the world for Christ. Number one, we monthly support mission works and missionaries. We currently support 54 missions or missionaries around the world. 54. And uh, they're supported solely by our faith promise missions offerings. Each year at our annual missions emphasis conference, uh, we focus on that and trust the Lord to try to grow and, and to improve and to do more uh, than the year before. Uh, but having a vision for the Lord's work in the world includes more than giving simply our money. That's not enough. It includes giving ourself. Ourself. I think one of our most powerful mission ministries in our own community is our bus ministry. Our bus ministry. It's one of the most fruitful, rewarding, soul-winning outreaches in our church here for our own Jerusalem. Luke 14, 23, The Lord said unto the servant, Go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. If he didn't write that for a bus worker, I don't know what else that verse applies to. The highways and the hedges, compelling them to come in. Uh, what a great scriptural principle for the bus ministry. It's one of the outreaches here with unlimited potential and opportunities. No limit. No limit. What do you mean, preacher? You turn that way and look as far as you can see, and beyond that, there's more fields that could be harvested in the bus ministry. It's everywhere, both directions. Uh, everywhere we look, uh, we appreciate our bus workers and bus drivers. I, I'm thankful they're early uh, on services and late after services, whether it's warm or cold or hot or cool, fall, spring, winter, whatever. Saturdays, they're giving their time, devoting it to the bus ministry. I thank the Lord for our bus workers. And uh, I appreciate Miss Kathy. She's such an encouragement in the bus ministry. And I ask her just to share a little something with us about the bus. She does it so often anyway, you know. 
but you know, she, I think she was a little bit nervous about that, but she did a great job, and I want you just to watch this. She's a blessing, and our bus workers are as well. I hope you'll be encouraged by this little short video. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Kathy, and um, here at Tri-State Baptist Temple, I help on the bus ministry, and I drive the van, and we have another van and a bus, and we go around the Tri-State area and pick up kids that likes, wants to hear the Word of God, and on Saturdays, we go visiting to visit the kids, so they'll come Sunday school and church, and Wednesday night, we have a program but um, I get a joy picking up the kids, how excited they are when they get on the bus about what they've done all that week. And then after they come um, to hear the service, they're excited when they get on the van to tell us what they learn and about Jesus. And I just praise the Lord for the opportunity to drive the van for the Lord and the church. Thank you. Amen. I'm thankful she does too, and she does a tremendous job. But the bus ministry is such an important thing, and uh, I'm praying we'll have a vision for our bus ministry. Uh, we have it. It's under. Uh, it's 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 thriving. It's it's growing. Uh, but uh, we've kind of stayed where we've been now for a little while. We need to have a vision for that in this year. Uh, we we need to we need more laborers. I tell you, you can't be involved in anything in our church that's more profitable than the bus ministry. Some of, you know, I, I, everywhere I've been, when I left here and, and went to Tabernacle Baptist Church in Kingsport, I went there and one of the things I did was I was the bus pastor, the bus director of our bus ministry. And everywhere I turned, there were people there who told me about how they used to serve in the bus ministry. They used to. They used to. And my question is, why is it used to? Why are you not still serving in the bus ministry? Why are you not still driving, knocking doors, visiting people? There's still more children out here than we can reach. We, we need laborers for the bus ministry. And there's nothing more rewarding than it. Uh, we, we, need, we need more laborers. We need more bus routes. We could use more vehicles. Ironton is not being touched by a bus ministry. We, we're not making it up into the Burlington area. Uh, one of my visions has been to, uh, to have a... I know I can take you to the place right now where the bus I want is. It's right at the foot of the bridge. If you go up here into Chesapeake, cross the river, there's a car lot right there. You know where I'm talking about? Out of... Chesapeake into Huntington, car lot right there. There's a bus sitting on the back lot, a white little mini bus. It's got a big Marshall M and a green Marshall sticker down the side. I'd like to have that thing with somebody with a burden and take it to the Marshall campus every Sunday and load it up with as many students as we could get to come. There, there are places, there are ministries at there uh, at the campus, but there are no local churches really close enough for a lot of those students to get actively involved in. I'd like to say it's going to be at the student center at 9 a.m. every Sunday, whether one comes or ten comes, and give people an opportunity to come to a Bible preaching local church. Kids get saved through different ministries on campuses, but you know salvation is only part one. Right. Part two is getting involved in a Bible preaching local church. There's no substitute for that. If we don't teach that to new converts, we're doing them an injustice because it's the Word of God. A, a, a Bible club and these things are good, but a local church is God's plan for saved people. We need to provide them for a way to get involved in a Bible preaching local church. Man, what a blessing. So somebody say, okay, I've got it. I'm going to buy that bus and drive that bus. Let's do it. We need CDL qualified drivers. We've got a booklet can show you the steps you need to get your CDL license. We've got men who've gone through that right here. They can do that. They can help you learn to do that. Uh, a bus is something that we could use. Consolidate our two van routes onto another bus route. Send both of those vans out other directions to cover more territory and grow uh, our bus ministry. So many things that can be done, but the bus ministry is such a great tool in reaching souls. 
So our missions, uh, our faith promise missions program, our bus ministry, but then a third thing is our short-term mission trips. Every other year, we try to put together a trip where we can take people, not on a sightseeing trip, not just to go see some place in the world, but to take a working, active mission trip, working and involved with a missionary that we know God is using in a great way. Probably only those who've ever been involved in a short-term trip truly know the value of that trip and how much it impacts their life, not just personally and as a family, but it changes and revolutionizes how they look at the Lord's work in their own local church. If you've ever gone on a short-term mission trip, you'll come back to the church with a different view of what your church is trying to do and what missionaries are, are really all about when they come to your church. You have a whole different view of that. Uh, it enlarges your heart for the mission ministry of your church. I'm convinced it's one of the greatest single outreaches that any child of God can participate in. And I believe there are so many scriptural principles that establish the need and practice for this in the Word of God. John 4, 34, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me to finish His work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look on the fields, plural, for they are white, ready to harvest. I tell you, people need to get out of America, which is not reality, and see reality, which is every other country in the world. The great need there are for missionaries to reach the masses of humanity who've never heard the name of Jesus Christ, who don't have ten churches 20 feet apart that they have to choose which one do I want to go to today when they're willing to walk miles to try to get to a church where they can hear the gospel. The reality of the need of the world is outside the doors of our homes and our church in the far corners of the world. Uh, God said we need to lift up our eyes and go and see it for ourselves so our hearts can be enlarged. Lamentations 531 uh, 351 says, Mine eye affecteth my heart because of the daughters of my city. You see it with your own eyes, and it'll change your heart forever. He says in Mark 16, 50, Go ye into all the world. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In Acts 16, 9, And a vision appeared to Paul in the night, and there stood a man of Macedonia praying, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And we hear the Macedonian call by missionaries all around the world. Come and help us. You know, uh, nobody has ever been on a short-term trip that, that our goal wasn't to be a blessing to that missionary. And, and we could tell you stories about how missionaries were hanging on. Their children were desperate. There was problems in families and, and the devil was attacking families. And then God sends a mission group along, even if it's for a week, to encourage them, to let them know what they're doing is worth it, that people are praying for them and they're encouraged and strengthened enough by God's love through that group to help them keep going on for the Lord. It's essential and it's important, but not just to the missionaries, but to our own hearts and lives as well. And it's an important part of our mission ministry. This year... In July, we've got a group of people going to Ireland, 21 people from our church. You say, people, that's, Pastor, that's more people we have in church on Wednesday night. Well, it is normally, but a lot of them are serving in our Bible clubs, driving our buses, working with the teenagers. They're involved in God's work, not just here, but they want to reach out and let God use them to touch the hearts and lives of other people around the world. 21 people say, Pastor, why are you going to Ireland? That's a first world country. They don't need the gospel over there. They're wealthier than we are. Do you know that Ireland is 87% Roman Catholic? Now you say that's not a large number. South American countries are larger percentages of recognized Roman Catholics, and they are. But you know what Ireland is number one in? practicing Roman Catholics. Because out of that 87%, nearly 100% of them are hard-shelled practicing Catholics. You go into South America, those people will tell you they're Roman Catholics, but few of them actually practice Roman Catholicism. It's not that way in Ireland. They're Catholic to the core. 
and they are they are they have been uh, they have been uh, just uh, darkened and besieged with Roman Catholicism. Uh, and Brother Dan Canavan, our missionary, we support. Uh, we're going to go over there to try to be an encouragement to him and help him for a little bit in July. But these things are important things that help us uh, to, uh, to try to, uh, to live and lay down our lives of service for the Lord. A fourth thing I want to talk to you about is being involved in Love Works projects in our community. And this is something that's really different for us. We know that thought, that love works, charity never faileth, God's love works. It gets the job done. It'll do what nothing else can do. But another way to think about this thought of love works is, is love works. There's some work that needs to be done when we love people. Work to show the love of God. And this year, we have, uh, we have uh, you know, we know that God said His love never fails. It always works. The love of God for the souls of men is selfless. It's self-sacrificing. The love of God was given by His grace, not because we deserve it, but because it's His nature to love us. Christ lives within us. We're to love the souls that He loved. Seek to reach them with that love, without any hidden agenda or selfish motive. Matthew 5.13, he said, You're the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And they ought to be love works, shouldn't they? Because that's the only thing that will work. To glorify your Father which is in heaven. Throughout this year, each month, there will be a variety of Love Works projects that we have scheduled and that we're encouraging our church collectively and you and your family individually to take part in. Uh, the purpose of these projects and outreaches is threefold. Number one, we want to express the selfless, sacrificial love of God through works of kindness and compassion. Number two, we want to share the gospel of Christ with as wide a variety and number of people as we possibly can. Number three, to impact our community as a local church body for the glory of God. Let people know Tri-State Baptist Temple is here in this community. Now, community projects are going to be one of the things you're going to see on your calendar every year, every month. These are projects that there's no other reason to do them but just to show people the love of God because God loves them. The, these, we're going to try to enlist as many of you as we can. Sometimes it'll be your time we need. Sometimes it'll be your resources, your labor, maybe all of those things. But beginning in February, each month on your calendar, you'll see a love work project that anyone can help with. Some of these things uh, are, I, I'm excited about some of them. and They may seem like nothing, but I think they demonstrate the selfless love of Christ. Uh, we're going to go up to Heartland on one evening and take Valentine balloons and cards and just visit all the residents and tell them that we love them at Tri-State Baptist Temple. I think that's a tremendous thing we can do to show the love of God to people in our community because their families are going to know who visited them. They're going to know who gave them that card and sent that balloon and took time to come by and love them and, and share that with them. Uh, another thing we, I want to do this year is uh, if you've ever been in an ICU waiting room, you know how, how blessed it is maybe if there's a basket of some snacks or some refreshments in that waiting room that you can use because most of those people never leave. They stay right there till they got the next visit to go in and out. I think it would be great if we could put together some baskets of just snacks that we could just take and hit all of the local uh, waiting rooms in our hospitals. A little card there encouraging people. Maybe some literature we could give uh, to help those people that are going through a troubling time. Let them know the Lord loves them. Uh, I think it'd be great to go up to the state patrol post and the police uh, office here in South Point and some morning take them some coffee and donuts. They'd have to like it. They're police officers, right? <laughs> and just show them, show them we love them. We're glad they're our neighbors in our community and we wanna, want them to know that we're here. Uh, you see, the point is just love works. 
just things done out of love, not, not for any purpose or reason other than that we know that God wants our lives to touch and reach the lives of others. We're going to go up to the VA hospital and, uh, and distribute flags and cards to all the veterans that are there at the hospital on one day and uh, just show them we love them and that uh, we appreciate what they do. All of these and other types of projects are going to take a coordinated effort and your involvement, but I think there'll be a tremendous blessing to these people and to us if we'll be willing to take the time to do it. So these community projects, but each month we're going to have a church project. And these are going to be things we ought to do just because we love our church. Just because they, they need done and we love our church. Things, uh, things that show our appreciation for our church and prove the sincerity of our love to the Lord for caring for and keeping our campus and properties in top shape. Uh, things like taking all of our tables and just bleaching them down and cleaning them real good. I promise you they need it. <laughs> the chairs and the tables. Uh, things like uh, taking and cleaning the kitchen up and having some closet cleanups and cleanouts. Our, our, our storage areas over the course of a year, it's a disaster. It's dangerous to walk in some of these places. Uh, we need help with that, and it's something that we could do just to show our love. Our daycare fence, we need to paint that fence this year. It's rusty. It looks terrible out there. Those kids are going to get locked jaw off a of plane out there or something. We need to scrub that thing down and get some paint on it. That's a project we can do just because we love the Lord and we want the opportunity to minister to those kids. Uh, all kinds of things, landscaping, the youth building up there could use some landscaping, a porch, some walks and things that need to be done to it. We've got a thriving group of young people right now, 24, 25 kids up there that love uh, being there. They're hungry, they're being saved, they're trying to win their peers. Uh, it's, it's exciting and I hope that I hope we can do some things for them just because we love them. But a community project, a church project, then each month you're going to see an individual love work. We're going to suggest something that you could do privately and on your own just because. And uh, some of these things might include uh, taking a pie to your neighbor. And I know that I'm not really your neighbor, but I could be your neighbor. Uh, but take a pie to a neighbor. Give a restaurant gift card to a veteran around Memorial Day or Veterans Day. Uh, mow somebody's lawn this summer. I think this would be a great project. Some teenagers could get on that, don't you? Uh, take a neighbor or co-worker to lunch. Uh, maybe you just never take time to talk to them about the Lord or whatever. Uh, take time to do that. Every month there will be a project you on your own can do. Nobody has to know about it. You're not going to be asked to give a report about it. Only God's going to know it, and God can use your life just to show some love. Uh, to those people. So, so these projects. And then fourth thing there is outreaches, outreach projects. Once a month we're going to have an outreach. Uh, it'll be on your calendar. Uh, some of them will be organized and scheduled. We'll meet here and everybody work together. Others may be just for you and your family to undertake at your own convenience, maybe on your street, road, neighborhood, whatever. Uh, some of them will be Door to door, uh, we've got our Memorial Day parade track distribution. We do VBS blitzes. Uh, we have some special booklets that are kind of seasonal sensitive and we can give them out around certain seasons of the year. But uh, all of these things are things we can do just to prove that the love of God works in 2014. It never fails. And uh, I think no matter how God works in the lives of other people, He'll work in our lives if we let God's love have control of our life and live for Him and serve Him. I'm excited about the year. I have a great expectancy in my heart uh, that just rests upon the Lord and who and what He is. And I think if each of us will grasp these purposes in our lives and live our lives to fulfill them, God can do a great work in 2014. He's done some great things in 2013. You look around you at all the people that are here that a year ago we didn't know them and now they're a vital part of our church family and ministry. We have one more video we want you to watch and I hope it'll kind of sum it up of how happy we, ha we should be and how we got to count our victories in the Lord and uh, we'll watch that and then we'll be finished here this evening. <clears throat> April 7th will make uh, one year. Uh, we were saved the first day we attended here. Um, ever since then, we've just been trying to take things head on.
trying to help out the church as much as we can, just stay involved and just uh, you know, get closer with God and get closer with, with the people here. Everybody here has been such an encouragement, and we just feel blessed to have found a good church home and a good church family. Um, from the first day that we came, everyone has made us feel so welcome, and just like we're at home when we're here. There's things that have, we've went through the past year that we wouldn't have been able to make it through without our church family, and we just we love it here. We love our family. God's been good to us so far, and continue to be great with us. And like she said, we've went through some through some things here the past year that we wouldn't have been able to make it through without God. And our kids are learning more and more about Jesus and just trying to have a good church home and provide a good church family within our home. Amen. That's a blessing, isn't it? And the love of God does the job. And if we'll love Him and allow Him to love our uh uh, through our lives, uh, I think we, we have a vision to see a lot of great things happen in 2014. And so we're thankful and excited about it. I hope, I hope you know, if we don't look ahead and have a vision, we're going to stop moving forward. Right. We're going to stop moving forward in our own lives, personally, and in the Lord's work. And we're just going to come to a standstill. And, uh, and we need to look up and look ahead and have a vision. We have a great heritage as a church. We have a rich history here in a church uh, that's been a great church, but the future's filled with great opportunities. This year's filled with great opportunities, and it's an unlimited and unreached potential, uh, and that potential's in your heart and life, in the Lord, and allowing Him to love other people through you. Uh, so we're excited about tonight. We're going to finish up, have a word of prayer together, and uh, I hope you come by, get the calendar material that's there, uh, just scratch your name off on that, but uh, pray about these things. Take time to look through that calendar. Pray about the events and things that we have planned and the projects and just uh, res have some resolve and steadfastness in your heart this year that uh, this year is going to be the year that you just surrender to the Lord everything and just let Him live through your heart and life and, and allow Him to love other people through you with the same love that He loved you with. And uh, I believe God will do some tremendous things here in our church in this year. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time we've been able to spend together. And uh, Lord, I appreciate the time these people uh, that are here tonight, your people, have given to this service. Uh, Lord, they've sat, they've listened. Uh, Lord, I, I hope that God in their heart, they have an anticipation and excitement like we do that's based upon God, uh, the, uh, the un, uh, unstoppable, unlimited power of your love as it's brought to bear in the hearts and lives of men. And so, Lord, we pray this year that as we, as we move forward under this theme of love works, that God will, will never, uh, will never stop uh, looking ahead and looking around us at the opportunities that are all uh, here uh, in our hearts and lives, homes, community, uh, around the world, uh, that God, your love through our lives uh, can make a difference and impact uh, the lives of other people. We want to magnify you and glorify you. Uh, we want to love you. Uh, Lord, we want our lives to be lived in Christ, and we want to grow in you and our likeness to you. And Lord, we want to lay down our lives to serve you, uh, Lord, just out of the love that you've loved us with for other souls. And so we just ask you now, God, to lead and guide us. Uh, Lord, uh, it's not by might nor by power, but by thy spirit. And Lord, we just pray that, Father, we'll be spirit-filled people. And Lord, uh, we'll demonstrate the love of God in all that we are and do. And Lord, we know that you'll do the work. And we'll thank you for it. We ask your blessings on these people tonight. Pray you'd meet their needs. And Lord, may they just fall in love with you anew and afresh. God, may we live for you and serve you this year with that first love. And God, we'll ask you now again just to bless and work. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>